Today on the SN95 Owner's Guide, we continue with Delete the Pogo Stick. That's right, part two of our suspension upgrade. Welcome, this is the SN95 Owner's Guide, as you know, and this is part two of our suspension upgrades on the Sixer, right? Yep. Great. So, last episode, we did the rear suspension. It's been about a week or so. Sean's been driving it around as is. How's it turned out? Good. The back end is awesome. Right now, she's set up in the full drift mode. Yeah, so basically, you have V8 seeming power in your V6. It basically swings yep. the back end out wildly. Super fun to drive. Not the best for handling, but super fun to drive. Almost sketchy in the snow. Yeah, very much so, because it is still winter, so uh, hopefully that goes away soon. Front end, lots of bite. The back end does whatever it wants at any throttle input. Yeah, so Sean's been having a lot of fun with that, but so far, a couple of minor squeaks. Not enough grease on the bushings. Lessons learned. Nah. Always over grease, but Sean doesn't care. Not Super good. So now we're ready to tear into the front suspension, which is basically springs. Yep. Bushings. Yep. Ball joints. Yep. And a few other little bits. Box control arms. Ah, yes, boxing the control arms. That's a new thing. Uh, we will talk about that at greater length, but let's cut over to the tabletop. Now, in part one, we uh, did the entire rear suspension. We got that successfully done, and we recognize that in one day, trying to do the front suspension as well, far too ambitious. So, Sean, take us through what's left to do in the front. Okay, in the front end, we have, well, all the front end pieces. First thing, control arm bushings. Steering rack bushings. Those are an awesome piece. That actually makes a big, big difference yeah. all on its own. The steering feedback is awesome with those. Yeah. Sway bar end links with urethane bushings. For now, just factory junkyard replacement uh, sway bar bushings that are not bent. Yeah, Sorry. we'll we'll show you why we need those once we get under the car. Yeah. Later on, we'll get proper ones, but we need to know diameter size and all that to order them up. We didn't do that. We have strut mount bushings. That actually makes a big difference too. Sure. Especially with keeping the alignment in line, hard cornering. Mm -hmm. New ball joints for the control arms, new outer tie rods, new inner tie rods, all sourced from Ford. Our Ford Racing 53C springs. And then we also have to plate and reinforce our lower control arms. Now, let's start taking it apart. We have the wheel off, and the very first thing, if you're going to work on the front of these and do the bushings, once the wheel's off, make sure that the bolts in the lower control arms are going to turn, break free, and come out. We went underneath to make sure, because we were having trouble easily sourcing control arm bolts. So the first thing you want to do is put a breaker bar on the bolts, break them free, make sure they move. If they move, they'll come out. That's all good. If they don't, put your wheel back on, drive, get bolts, get everything you need so you're not stuck apart in the driveway. If you have a close look in here, we are going to show you why we have junkyard sourced sway bar brackets. See how this one's bent? The driver's side is even worse. Someone at one point hooked the tow rope to the sway bar, tried to pull the car out of whatever it was stuck in and bent the mounts all up. So for now we're just putting factory replacements in that are good. Now we're going to start taking everything apart to do the work. Sean has the entire front control arm out. It wasn't too, too bad of a job, but where we're replacing everything with new ball joints, new tie rods, we're able to pickle fork everything apart. Yeah. You can't pickle fork anything you intend to reuse. Important point. One quick thing to note, never hang your calipers by the hoses. Always hang them up with a co-hanger or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do as we say, not as we do. That's right. Now, Sean's over here at the bench. We've just pushed the ball joint out, which... Uh, we had all the proper pullers yep. right over there. Fantastic kit, super expensive. Most home gamers won't have that, but guess what it did? It uh, pushed out the bottom and then we had to extract the shell because they're original. So our recommendation is if the car's old and it's got some mileage or you're uncertain, buy replacement control arms and start from there. It's way better, easier. Yeah. Especially for the home gamer. Now Sean's basically gonna use our internet bushing removal trick to uh, rip these old rubber bushings out of the shells and prep them for the new uh, for the new ones. At least we're going to try to. Good. I have to cut that ridge off. 
So before doing the internet bushing trick on this one, Sean had to cut the outer rib off so we could actually get to the bushing shells. Now it should go. And sometimes you break a drill bit. Yep, it happens. That's why I'm using an old drill bit to do it. Very important. Don't use a good one. The bushing removal didn't quite work with the internet method, so we not, need a little bit of fire. Yeah, not the front ones. The front ones are in there way better. Yeah, so we managed to get those out, and now Sean's moving on to the next step of preparing these control arms because we've got the ball joints out, we've got them all cleaned up, and they are ready to have new bushings put in, but Sean is doing one final additional stiffening step. Yep. I am going to use some metal, and I'm going to plate the control arm. Right. Nearly tip to tail. So this is basically an alternative to buying tubulars. Back in the day before tubulars existed, this was a pretty common practice for those looking for the ultimate rigidity for a road racy Mustang. Yep. Uh, nowadays, Sean, would you say it's easier to just buy a tubular arm? Oh, God, yeah. But this is a cheap car, and we're cheap. doing cheap things. That's right. Yes. So basically what Sean's done is he's taken some drawing paper. He has expertly crafted a template which will be transferred onto the metal, and we're going to, again, cheat for the home gamer. And we're going to use a plasma cutter to zip these things out really close to where they need to be. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, so a couple of considerations. One is uh, the spring pocket. You're going to have to relieve a place for that because uh, it doesn't really fit very well. It doesn't sit flat, so you'll have to relieve it. Yep, and you'll also have to make an access port for the sway bar end link, uh, as evidenced right there. Yeah. But aside from that, this is just basically a, a plating project, and we're going to set to work on that. Done. So when we last left Sean, he had cut a template that he had used to make some steel, and now welding's all done. Look at this. Stand that up and show the world, Sean. Isn't that nicely boxed? Pretty decent. It'll do. Yeah, it will totally do for our purposes. Yep, it's got a drain hole for where the spring pocket is. Yep. It's also got uh, an access hole for where the end link goes. Yeah. Other than that, she's welded in there, reinforced. We're not after real thick steel to do anything. We just need to, for some rotational stiffness. Yep. As it loads up under braking and cornering together. Yeah, uh, Anything's for sure. better than factory. That's right. And honestly, if you don't have time at your disposal or fabrication skills and a whole bunch of welding gear... Just buy them. Just buy some tubular ones and uh, probably go from there. SVO control arms as well. Oh yes, SVO control arms are good. Are a beefier upgrade. But also when I say buy tubular ones, buy good tubular ones Not from a reputable Chinese. manufacturer. No, spend at least a couple hundred dollars. That's right, expect to spend that much money, otherwise leave the stalkers in there, they're not that bad. Or you can go buy a new set of control arms from Napa or wherever have you, take the bushings out, box them, get them all ready to go, literally bolt them in. Yes, that's another time saver as well if uh, you don't want to have a lot of downtime on your daily driver. We probably should have did that. Probably, but why bother? So, well, the next thing we got to do is load these up with... That out. Sean's still super proud of that. No, that. Oh, yeah. So, the rust in the spring pocket, it looks like these things have been stored in salt water. They are in real rough shape. But, good uh, enough, though. Good enough for this car. <laughs> Maybe not for your own and not for a real good car, but uh, these are definitely pretty good. These match that car perfectly. Absolutely. So we just got to load these up with bushings, press in new ball joints, stuff like that. And we will begin reassembling some stuff on this side and walk you through that.
All right, and now we join Sean again underneath the Sixer. He's got a control arm there. Bushings? In. Ball joint? In. Right. Ready to install? Yep. What'd you do on the end of the bushings? I applied the lube all around the rim. Piles of it, right? Yep. Yeah, because we got squeaky upper control arms in the back. Yes. We got a squeaky rear. Needs more lube. You can never go wrong with more lube. Right. So, you gonna throw this thing in or what? Yep. Now, you'll notice here that we have a brake caliper, which Sean warned you about. You see that nasty bend up there, almost 90 degrees? You're gonna want to avoid doing that on your car you actually care about. That's right. But for us, it's, it's not perfect. just good. It's, it's good enough. Good enough. Oh yeah. All the way home. Not bad. Nope. Cool. So, we're gonna keep bashing on this, and we will join you at the very next step. Because, honestly, suspension disassembly is very boring. Suspension reassembly is triumphant. Exactly. Here we are ready to start putting this car back together. We have the front control arm in place with the bushings. Next step is to put our 650 pound springs in. Once we get this in place, we'll use a little jack to hold the control arm at height so we can put the knuckle in. Then we'll put our strut in place. Next step is to install the strut with the urethane, urethane pieces. First thing you have to do is debond the rubber mounting plate off this metal piece for your strut. It's easy, you just take a torch, heat it up on the back side till the rubber literally falls off. Very simple. Then once it's cooled down, you take your urethane puck, liberal applications of grease, smack her on top. It's sticky. This stuff is gross and sticky as hell. Put your top plate back on, kind of feed her up into the hole a bit. Take your top piece with bushing, all full of the greasy goose. Get her all lined up in place. Put your little top hat. Put that mammer jammer on there. Gonna start trying to squeeze her together and get enough on her to get a nut started. There we are. Couple of threads, right? It's on there, just a couple of threads. We're gonna give her a turn or two to make sure we're on the whole way. You do not want to tighten it up immediately. You tighten it up, good luck getting this back in. Yeah, those upper mounts are awesome. There, just enough so she's on a couple threads. Then you line your knuckle up, take your jack up to the bolts line up. Once you get them in, now, She's factory torque spec tightened, which is about three ratatatas. Right, or good and tight. Yep. In the in the German torque spec. Yep. Or as the tire guy calls it, three uggatuggas. Right. So here we've got a little bottle jack, as we mentioned. If you're working on jack stands, use your floor jack and a block of wood, something like that. Don't try and muscle this together, and don't try to fit a spring compressor in there. It's just a waste of your time. It's the worst way to do it. Yeah, spring compressor is only good if you're using factory ride height springs and you use it long enough to hold it together so you can get a jack underneath it. Yes. And that's it. And then it should go without saying that if you have caster camber plates, you, you do not use the urethane uppers. That's right. You'll have a much nicer, generally, rod end or a pillow bearing, as it's called. Yeah, the, my 88, that uh, had a pillow bearing in it. Right, and that's a much more firm install, but... If you don't have caster camber plates, these are definitely the way to go. Yep. Cool. What are we jumping to next, Sean? Uh, just tighten up some bolts, throw a rotor caliper on, throw our end links back together, tie rods back on, wheels on, then tighten underneath fasteners. Cool. All right, so we'll jump back just before we're ready to put the uh, wheels on and show you what we've done. We now have the entire thing buttoned up. Springs in, struts in, end links, tie rods, all done. Last thing to do, put a tire on, Set it down so it's got full ride weight on, then tighten up the lower control arm bolts. You do it with ride height set, that way you don't have any binding. Your thing you usually don't, but it's a just in case, it's always good standard practice. And from there, we will see you on the outro. Okay, and that is a wrap for part two. We uh, pretty much ran out of time because a couple of things didn't really want to behave properly. So we're going to leave the front sway bar, that's the main tie up. 
And we're going to leave that for another time because we have to go dig out fasteners for it because the front mounts are so buggered that we can't even unscrew them without snapping the bolts off. So we're just going to leave those be for now. Rack bushings as well. Rack bushings as well. Because that is of, a job. That, that is a job, but it's an awesome upgrade. They're like 11 bucks or something like that. They're super cheap, but they're an awesome upgrade, but they are a little bit of a job. And then we're going to have to do our inner and outer tie rods, which of course puts us into an alignment. So we're completely out of time for today, but we'll take care of that in part three. But part one and part two, have been good. And our ride height, we went from, what was it, 27 and a quarter? 27 and a half front. Yes. 27 and a quarter rear. Right. We're now 27, 27. That's right. So the car is level at 27 inches flat without isolator. So we took just a slight drop, but we really bumped the spring rates up. We're pretty sure that those were a terrible set of Eibach Sport lines, which uh, are a nice appearance spring, but the spring rates are absolute garbage. Absolute junk. The good car show springs. Yeah, they're really good show springs. Not very good for handling, driving, and all those other things. So, until next time, we will catch you later.